Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and I have gone through YouTube, the internet, and I have gotten all the complaints and the issues on the Ford Maverick. And also, if you hang in in the end, we're going to give you the 800 number if you have one on order in order to figure out where you're at, when it's going to be built. And they also have other information. This is a dedicated Ford Maverick customer service number. Stick around. First, a lot of people are saying that the engine does not have enough power. Well, this is very subjective here. It depends what you owned before. <laughs> now, I myself am a V8 man and a diesel man, so I have had the opportunity to drive the base Ford Maverick, and I'm here to tell you, uh, obviously, if I was going to pull 4,000 pounds behind me, I would probably be griping that the engine didn't have enough power. But, in regular situations, I'm here to tell you this thing has more than enough power. So, once again, this is subjective. Take it for what it's worth. The engine powers range from 191 horsepower to 250 horsepower with curb weights of about 3,600 pounds to 3,700 pounds. Nothing out of whack here. Uh, once again, take it for what it's worth. Depends what you drove before. Uh, the highest complaint, the engine is way too noisy and the cab has way too much road noise and needs more insulation. Well, once again, if that was an issue and you wanted something that was more quieter, you needed to get something that was more expensive. Maybe you should have bought a Ford Ranger or an F-150. Folks, that is just the way it is. When you have a lower cost model vehicle, they're not going to put another $100, $200 worth of insulation into it. Get used to it or take your interior out of your truck and put some Dynamat in there, which is a car stereo type of mat that blocks off any type of road noise. Just an idea. Next one, the transmission has too much torque in the beginning range and is uh, unresponsive in the higher range and slow to react in the high range. Um, in a multiple gear transmission, they want to get you off of the line as quick as possible and you're going to run through them gears really quick. That is how you save the fuel mileage and this is why you're able to get 40 miles to the gallon. Uh, that is just the way it works. Now in the higher range, uh, people are saying that, well, you know, you're up in the 50, 60, 70 mile an hour range and you want to pass then it's it's slow to react. Well, that very well could be, and later on you might see an upgrade from Ford in a computer upgrade install to the software, but once again, I drove one of these, really didn't see that issue. So take that once again for what it's worth. Um, here's one of those things that you know, if you're old school, yeah, even even this still quirks me, but this is the future and, you know, get used to it. So the rotary gear selector is hard to use. Once again, you know, I've gone through my whole life with a shifter on the floor, shifter on the column, and yeah, I, every vehicle that I get into that's got a knob to turn for your gear selector, it's just different. It, once again, this is just subjective. Uh, one of the complaints about the gear selector is, is that when you're turning it, it, it will keep on turning. You can turn it into the drive mode and it'll actually keep on spinning if you keep on turning it. 
Um, yeah, I, you know, would have been nice if they would have locked it in. That way you know that when you're in drive, so you jump in the vehicle, when you start getting used to it, you reach down, turn it into drive, that it would lock into drive. I, I, I can kind of see that, but once again, uh, it's just one of those things that you get used to. Uh, also, <laughs> this one always kills me, and, and this has been going on in new vehicles for quite a while. Uh, when you're in drive and you open the door, it slams into park. Well, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of stupid people out there, and that's just one of those things that they had to do for safety. Um, I'm sure uh, you might have seen TikTok videos of people falling out of their car doors. It just, you know, yeah, we live in a society that there's some stupid people and you just have to do this so <laughs> hope you have some fun with that one let me know in the comments what you think about that uh next one the rear cab rattles and vibrates due to the accessory metal for upgraded models so what they mean by that is that you tilt down the back seat and behind the back seat there are some protruding pieces of tin and I'm not even going to call it metal, it's tin, really thin sheets that have some type of, for the higher models, some type of attachments that go on them. And in the base models and the lower models, when you hit bumps, then they rattle. So real, you know, if you're going to get a lower model and you experience this, go down to your automotive store, get yourself some 3M double-sided foam tape and attach it to the back stops the problem right away problem handled is what it is that's why it's a twenty thousand dollar truck uh, front seats the foam rubber breaks down causing loose fabric um, this is the complaint but i don't believe the foam rubber is breaking down so fast within a thousand to five thousand miles uh, I think what is happening is is that in the back of the seat, when the seat cover rolls over, there's a connection back here, and I kind of think that might be happening is is that they might have that velcroed, and in the production of you know trying to get out all these trucks, eh, they're not being pulled tight and properly attached, or if they have little rings that attach to a metal binder underneath the seat. They're just not tight. I, I don't perceive this as a really big deal. Yeah, you just bought a new vehicle and the seats are coming loose, but this is something that warranty will cover and it's really minor, nothing to get excited about. Uh, the rear tip-up bench seat does not lock down tight. Well, you bought a $20,000 truck. I'm just going to leave it at that. Front seats uh, fully recline, and uh, once they're fully reclined, and they're not comfortable to lay in, meaning that the seat lays back, and then the headrest does this. So, yeah, it, it's not comfortable because the headrest doesn't... You can't adjust the headrest in there. If you're somebody and you're on a, a long trip or your passenger likes to sleep while you drive or lay back, which I find strange, but carry along an extra pillow in the back, no big deal. You know, just tuck her in by the neck, get her handled. Uh, difficult for tall humans to get into the rear seat and you can hit your head on the roof. That I would agree um, when I took a test drive in the base Ford Maverick. Um, I jumped into the back seat. There's a ton of room back there, no doubt. I mean, my goodness, if we're in high school again, my goodness. But anyways, uh, the back door does have a little bit of an issue there, so you just gotta be careful when you get in and out. It is what it is, it wasn't really designed for, you know, tall, adults to be sitting back there they're meant to be the drivers and your kids are in the back seat or teens so that's the complaint i don't see it as 
you know, that big of a deal. Uh, rides rough. A lot of people have said that the unit rides rough. Um, once again, when I drove one, I didn't think that it drove tough, but I believe I have the answer. Uh, if you're one of the people who think that this drives really rough, go out and check your air pressure on your tires. Could be nothing more simpler than that. Uh, here's a serious problem, but Ford does know about this. Uh, info screen freezes and malfunctions. It's hard to see in the direct sunlight. The computer glare screen can be placed on the screen to stop this. Uh, also collects fingerprints very easily that you can see all the time. Well, I have a couple uh, pads, uh, computer pads. They all collect fingerprints. And this right here is probably a basic screen. So go get yourself some computer screen wipes and stop your bitching. Next one is going to be lane assist is not working properly. Um, where I'm from, we were taught how to drive and pay attention when we drive. So uh, lane assist is something that I wouldn't even care about. But for the people who do. Uh, once again, Ford is aware of this. They know it is a hardware issue and it will be handled in the future. Uh, the next one's kind of scary. Uh, burning plastic smell. <laughs> Seems that there is wire grommets that run very close to the catalytic converter. And then also you have new vehicle smell. So... It's hard to say which one it is, but it's very normal to get a new vehicle and you have that burn off smell. You have the oils burning off, you have the transport burning off, uh, just that new vehicle smell that you get. Uh, so it might not be an issue, it might be an issue, it's hard to say, but these are one of the complaints. Uh, voice command is intermittent. Once again, this goes back to the info screen. Ford is completely aware of this. Yeah, it sucks you bought a new vehicle, but they will get this handled in the near future, hopefully. Uh, no auto up window and only driver's side auto down window. Um, you bought a $20,000 truck. Guess what? That's what you got. Auto high beams are too sensitive. Um, when I drove it, of course, it was during the day, so I didn't get a feel for these automatic headlights. I have driven other, other vehicles that do have auto dimming and auto high beams. Um, didn't like it. That's just me. So that goes back to being subjective. That's just me. If you're not used to it, you might not like it. Um, I think it would be something, though, that would be very easy to get used to, though. Next uh, complaint is the start-stop technology is irritating. <laughs> Once again, I think this is a situation where if you've been driving for, you know, umpteen, 20, 30 years, yeah, you know, it... it is more up here than it is an issue actually it works there's nothing wrong with it and i have driven uh, quite a few newer vehicles that do have the start and stop technology you know i didn't like it you get in there you can bypass it they do make bypass uh, the aftermarket equipment to plug in and completely stop that if that's just so irritating, then go out and buy one of those systems and get it installed. Um, a lot of people are concerned that, well, you know, if, if I'm in stop and go traffic, then it's not going to go right away. Well, I'm here to tell you I've had the opportunity once again to drive a few of the stop start technology vehicles, and I took her to the extreme. She starts and takes off every time. It, it, it is just that quick i never had an issue so don't worry about that uh, windows are very slow to go up on the front two doors the rear door seems to have the windows shoot up and down 
Uh, a lot of people are saying that the front uh, windows go up and down too slowly, uh, especially up. Um, yeah, probably got a cheap motor in there. And uh, when I drove, I, I didn't really, it, it didn't phase me. I didn't think it was all too slow. But, you know, could have been a different shipment of motors. The next one, speakers are too cheap. Well, <laughs> I'm a car stereo kind of guy myself. And the simple fact is, is that the speakers that are in the Ford Maverick uh, probably cost three bucks a piece. And if you want better speakers, there are all kinds of manufacturers out there that make fantastic speakers. I have yet to see any manufacturer, even the $3,000 stereo systems that uh, they charge have quality speakers. Usually it's the name is plastered on there like Bose and it's some cheap, you know, China made speaker anyways. So go out, put in better speakers. This is nothing that's new. Nothing at all. This has been going on since they developed aftermarket speakers. Go put some better ones in if you don't like them. Uh, top part of the headlamps have no lights in them except for the top of the line model. Well, then buy the top of the line model. <laughs> uh, no push to start except on the top of the line packages. I like a key myself, but if you had to have a push to start, you should have bought the push to start. Uh, to me, it's no big deal. Uh, no dedicated place to put your cell phone. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're really getting down there now. Uh, you know, uh, once again, this is something that's not new either, and I understand the majority of new vehicles have a dedicated place for you to put your cell phone but you know what go buy yourself a cell phone holder they sell billions of them big deal but that's just me so anyways if you have a ford maverick on order customer service for orders so you can find out where you are at and where your vehicle is at and when it's going to be made you can get the information at 1-800-334-4375. So I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day.